Hi, boys and girls. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know whether you have played this game before about knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Beats. Beats who? Beats me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Bless. Bless who? You who? But I didn't sneeze. Knock, knock. Who's there? Butter. Butter who? Better let me in or I'll freeze. Knock, knock. Who's there? Goat. Goat who? Go to the door and find out. Knock, knock. Who's there? Weekend. Weekend who? We can do anything we want. Knock, knock. Who's there? Who? 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 What are you, an owl? Knock, knock. Who's there? You. You who? You who? Anybody who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Zoom. Zoom who? Whom did you think it was? Well, boys and girls, (laughs) knock, knock, went Peter. Who's there? Asked the servant girl. This wasn't a joke, but what happened next was quite funny. Listen out for it in today's story. It's in Acts chapter 12 from verse 1 to 19. The disciples in the early church were faithful in obeying Jesus' command to witness to others. Every day, more and more people were trusting in Jesus as their Savior. This made the Jews angry. King Herod wanted to please the Jews so he could continue to be their king, so he arrested the apostle James, an important church leader. Herod ordered James killed with a sword. This pleased the Jews so much that Herod decided to go after Peter, another important disciple. Herod arrested Peter, but he could not kill the apostle right away. He had to wait until after Passover. Herod imprisoned Peter and assigned four soldiers at a time to guard Peter. Two soldiers were chained to him, one on each side. One soldier guarded the first prison door, while another soldier guarded the second door. The church was concerned about Peter. They met together and prayed for him during the night before Peter was supposed to die. In the prison, Peter was sleeping peacefully between the soldiers when a light filled the prison cell and an angel appeared. No one noticed. The angel had to hit Peter in the side to get him to wake up. Get up, the angel said as Peter's chains fell off. Put on your sandals, wrap your coat around you, and follow me. Of course Peter did as he was told, but he was not quite sure this was real. He thought it might be a dream. He followed the angel through the first set of doors, then through the second set. None of the guards startled. Finally, the angel led Peter to the iron gate leading to the city. The iron gate swung open all by itself. Peter and the angel walked out of the prison and down the street. There the angel suddenly disappeared. Peter was alone, and no one knew he had escaped. When Peter realized he was not dreaming, he knew God had sent an angel to deliver him from Herod. Peter decided to go to the home of a lady named Mary. Peter knew the church members would be praying there. Peter knocked at the gate. A young servant girl named Rhoda came to see who was there. She recognized Peter's voice, but instead of unlocking the gate, she ran to tell the others that Peter was at the gate. Of course, no one believed her. When Rhoda insisted she had heard Peter, they said she was just so worried about Peter that she was imagining he was there. Meanwhile, Peter continued to knock at the door of the gate. When the Christians finally opened the gate, they saw Peter and were amazed. Everyone was talking at once, but Peter raised his hand for them to keep quiet. He told them how he had escaped from prison and told them to tell the church leaders in Jerusalem. Then Peter went away to another place where Herod would not find him. The church members' prayers proved to be too powerful for Herod. The next morning, the soldiers were upset when they could not find Peter. Since they had slept through the entire escape, they had no explanation for King Herod. Herod searched everywhere for Peter but could not find him. Herod decided the soldiers should be put to death. So, boys and girls, P 
Peter gets out of one place in a spectacular, miraculous way, but finds it difficult to get into another where the disciples were praying. The church was praying, praying for Peter and boys and girls. God is always doing things in our lives. Sometimes we don't actually see that it's God. For Peter, he thought it was a vision, but actually God was delivering him. The angel had to poke him. Even after poking him, he didn't see until he was outside. Then he saw that it was God who had delivered him, set him free from prison. There are things God is doing. Please try and think about them and say, wow, it's God who did this in my life. If you don't, if you can't think of anything, boys and girls, you need to pray that Lord help me to see those things you do in my life and I don't see them. We should not just do prayer or pray for the purpose of just praying. Now, for these uh, Christians, this church, they were praying that Peter would be released from prison uh, by Herod. But when he got released, it took time for them to believe that he had been released. So when we pray, it's important, boys and girls, to believe that God answers prayer. Their prayer had been answered. Peter was right at the door knocking, knock, knock. And when Rhoda heard the voice of Peter and she was so excited, went and told those who were praying for Peter to be released from prison, they didn't believe that. So we need to be careful sometimes, boys and girls, that we just don't pray for the sake of praying, but to pray and believe that God answers prayer. God is very interested in every area of your life, whether big or small, whether it's a test you're going to be writing or it's you're not feeling well. God is interested. And it's important that when we pray, we put our trust in him. Someone gave this testimony. Some years ago, two men from one church uh both of them were a little old, in their 40s, had this bad disease called cancer. Everyone in that particular church were praying for them. One of them recovered and is very active in church, but the other one died. Now, these are the big questions, which we actually see in today's story. James was beheaded. It doesn't mean the church was not praying. The church was praying. But Peter was released. Now, Peter and James were both arrested. But only one came out of the prison alive. Peter was miraculously freed. But James was beheaded. Why? Now, in today's world, boys and girls, people pray, and we want to see miracles. We want to see God answer our prayers. Some of the prayers are answered, and some of the prayers we think that God has not answered the prayer. And things don't turn the way we asked God. Now, you would ask questions that, God, didn't you see that? God, didn't you hear? God, are you not hearing me? Are you not answering my prayer? Let me tell you, boys and girls, God answers prayer. Doesn't matter how the outcome or the end looks like. God answers prayer. Our problem is we are time-bound. We are limited. As people, we are not like God. God is everywhere. God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. He knows everything. Now, we see things 
in a limited way. People live on earth maybe for 100, 120 years. But God is not, he doesn't have that time span that you are limited. You can be, he he sees things in a different way. He sees your tomorrow. He sees your many years beyond. So to try and understand how he does his things, he answers prayer may be difficult. All I want to say to you boys and girls is that God answers prayer in his own way, whichever way he wants. So we just need to trust him. So how do we pray? We start by adoring God. Thank you, God, that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. Thank you, God, that you care for every one of us. You care for my dog. You care for my family. I mean, just adore him. Just love God. Number two, it's confess. There are times we fail God. My little children, I write this to you that you may not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. It's important, boys and girls, when we sin, we must go to God and confess our sins. So sometimes you don't know that you have sinned, but just confess your sin. Number three, thanksgiving. We must thank God. Learn to say, Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for my mom. I thank you for my dad. I thank you for my teacher. I thank you for... There are many things, boys and girls, we can thank God for. That you are right now, you are breathing. You are able to walk to school. You are able to do things. So we thank. Learn to say, Lord, thank you. And finally, S, which stands for supplication. It's an opportunity we can now ask God for whatever it is that we want to ask God for. So you ask him, Lord, we'll be traveling. I pray for Jenny Messes. Lord, I'm going back. I'm sleeping. I pray that you take care of all of us in this house tonight. So it's acts A. We must adore God. C, which is confess. Confess your sins. We fail God. We sin against God. T, which means thanksgiving. We must thank God. And S, supplication. It's an opportunity to ask whatever it is that you want to ask. Now, it's important, boys and girls, that we pray for other people. So when we pray for other people, whether we are asking God or we are thanking God for those people, now, take your hand, your thumb. It's to pray for those who are close to you, your family, your cousins, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your teacher, your all those people who are close to you, okay? Pray for them. So whoever you think is close to you, pray for them. The next one is this pointing finger. Pray for those who point us to Christ. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your Sunday school teachers. Pray for anyone who points you to Christ. Okay? Those who help you to love Jesus more. And then the middle finger. Pray for those in authority. The leaders. Okay, I said teachers earlier, but this is also where teachers come in. Your headmaster, the school prefects, anyone who's a leader in our country. You pray for your president, you pray for your prime minister, you pray for ministers, for those in authority. You pray for them, that God would give them wisdom to lead you better. And then that finger uh, which uh, those who are married, they put their ring in. Um, it's pray for the weak, pray for the sick, pray for the homeless, pray for those who who are poor and things like that. So 
you pray for those who are weak amongst us, orphans who don't have moms or dads, you want to pray for them, okay? And finally, the little finger is to pray for yourself, okay? So all I'm just telling you about this so that you just don't pray um, for yourself, but you remember to pray for all these other people. So as we saw in today's story, the church was praying, okay? And God answered their prayer. Boys and girls, pray. The Bible says we can pray every day. We can pray at school. Wherever you are, you can talk to God. He answers prayer. Um, I can tell you stories of what God has done. In many years, I've walked with him. When I pray, he has answered prayers. I mean, I remember at one time I was praying for a wife. And God told me that this one was going to be your wife. And I'm married to Auntie Kudze today. So God answers prayer, okay? So you can talk to him about anything and everything, okay? You can pray with other people. You can pray alone. You can pray with your family. You can pray with your friend. But what is important, boys and girls, is when we pray, we must believe that God answers prayer. So, Father, I thank you that you could do a miracle to release Peter from prison. I know that today, God, you have not stopped doing those miracles. And there are times, God, when we pray, we don't see anything, but doesn't mean you're not doing anything. We know, God, that you answer prayer. We trust you all the time. So I pray for boys and girls, whatever situation they may be in, I pray those chains would fall off that God, they may see freedom because of what God can do. We love you and we thank you for a super week. In Jesus' name, amen.